Greetings fellow members of Ampaholics Unanimous. Today's video is going to be a sequel to the previous video in which I described the process by which we can bias the output tubes in single-ended amplifiers. Today's video is going to describe the process by which we can accurately bias the output tubes in double-ended amps, whether they are controlled by the cathode or by the grid. First, a real quick review of what we learned in the first video, and I really recommend if you're a beginner to this uh, type of project, uh, please, please watch the first video to get all the basics. Uh, without them, I doubt that you'll be able to understand much in this video. In the first video, we discussed how to buy a single-ended output tubes that were cathode biased, and uh, we saw that first step was to measure uh, very accurately what is the resistance of the cathode bias resistor. Step two was what is the voltage drop across the resistor. Then we used that and Ohm's law to calculate the uh, plate current. Then we multiplied it by the plate voltage to get the plate dissipation. I hope that all sounds familiar. The only difference being that uh, in the double-ended amps that are cathode biased, uh, the cathodes, which are pin 8 on the tubes, if they are 6V6s, 6L6s, or 5881s, uh, they share a cathode bias resistor. So to determine the bias value of these tubes, we follow exactly the same steps. Number one, accurately measure the resistance of that resistor. Number two, accurately measure the voltage drop across the resistor. Uh, then we will divide the voltage drop by the resistance using Ohm's law and determine the plate current in the tubes. Now here's the trick. Since they share one cathode bias resistor, your plate current value will appear to be double, so you must divide it by two. When you divide it by two, you will then get the average of the plate current of both tubes. You will not get individual plate currents using this method, but you'll get the average. That'll be just fine uh, for, for our purposes. Okay, then uh, you know the fourth step and that is go in and accurately measure the plate voltage. You'll find it's most likely the same on both tubes. Multiply the plate voltage times the plate current that you calculated by Ohm's law and you have the plate dissipation of the tubes. If it's too high, we'll increase the value of this resistor. If it's too low, we reduce the value of the resistor and if it's just right, we leave it alone and put everything back together. Here's a chart uh, to tell you what the maximum permissible plate dissipation values are. Okay, this is the, these are the values here if you are cathode biased, and over here are the values if you are grid biased. We will talk about this later. Okay, but I at least wanted to tell you what this was. So let's stick right here for the cathode bias values. 6V6 or 6BQ5, unknown to some as EL84s, it's 12 watts. The metal 6L6s or 6L6Gs, which are the great big globe 6L6s, about 19 watts. 6L6GB, which is a little smaller, or 5881, which is smaller yet, 23 watts maximum, and 6L6GCs can stand a whopping 30 watts. Now this is maximum, okay? You can actually bias this hot if you want. Uh, I generally go a little under it just to play it safe, okay? Also one last bit of warning, if you're uh, biasing 6BQ5s, uh, the pin uh, designations are different. You have to look carefully at the schematic to find your plate and to find your cathode. It's not the same as 6V6s and 6L6s. Now, for those of you who intended to uh, bias uh, double-ended cathode-biased amps, 
I guess you're done now. You can uh, use the procedure that we used in the first video and just remember to divide your plate current by two. You'll get the average and then use that to do your biasing. For those who would like to see a second and a little more sophisticated method to tube bias and to learn the method for grid biased tubes, then stay tuned and we're going to discuss it right now. Okay, uh, we're going to use Ohm's Law again, but in a different way. Instead of using Ohm's Law on the cathode current down here, as we did in the previous video and the beginning of this one, we're going to use Ohm's Law on the plate current here. And uh, what you'll need to uh, do this is to first you look at your rectifier. If it's a 5Y3, a 5U4, or a GZ34, uh, we're going to be looking at pin 8 of the rectifier because in almost every schematic that uses one of these rectifiers, pin 8 connects to what we call the center tap of the output transformer. Look at your schematic and I think you'll see this. I'm going to show you four or five schematics and we're going to trace this out so I can help you become more comfortable with uh, reading schematics. So pin 8 here is your B+. Plus. This is the highest voltage in the amp so for God's sake be careful when you're doing these measurements. Okay, uh, comes up here to the center tap. Now the center tap feeds first this plate then we'll feed this plate because these tubes are in a push-pull relationship. And due to the phase inverter, which we haven't really discussed, but just trust me on this, these tubes are taking turns uh, providing energy to the speaker to give us our sound. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to, uh, first we're going to very accurately measure what is the resistance of this half of the output transformer. We're going to, with the amp unplugged, completely, uh, obviously turned off, and the filter capacitors drained, and I will demonstrate this for you, we're going to put our ohmmeter leads first here on the pin 8 lead to the center tap, one lead here, and one lead to the pin 3 of the one of the 6V6s, 6L6s, or 5881s. We have to do them individually. So, one lead on pin 3 of the output tube, one lead on pin 8 of the rectifier. Read this resistance, then leave your lead connected to pin 8 of the rectifier and go to the other plate of the other output tube and accurately measure this resistance. Write it down. I usually say outside tube, inside tube. Uh, if you say left or right, you might get confused. One of them is always closer to the outer uh, right or left uh, side of the amp, and the other is closer to the center, and that's the way I designate them and the way I will in the demonstration. Now that we know this resistance, and we know this resistance, we will hook up our leads pin 8 to pin 3 and using the DC voltage reading from our uh, voltmeter measure the voltage drop across this resistance and the voltage drop across this resistance and we'll write it down. Now, if this is at all confusing to you, don't feel bad. I think when you see the demonstration, uh, seeing it again will help clarify it for you. For the rest of you that are probably one step ahead of me by now, I hope, you know that if we know this resistance and we know the vol voltage drop across the resistance, we can use Ohm's Law and divide the voltage drop by the resistance and find out what the plate current is to that plate then do the same division process down here and calculate the plate current to this from this plate or through this plate. Now unlike the first procedure I showed you in this video where we get the average plate current of the two tubes, you're going to know the individual plate current. 
uh, and this one, say it's a 6V6, this one may be, um, say, 30 milliamps, and this one may be 28 milliamps. Don't fret, they're almost always different. Now, you've all heard of, of tube sets where they say the tubes are matched. What they mean is they will draw the same plate current when they are plugged in to the amplifier. Now, this is very important. If you have matched tubes, you're going to get like a 30 or a 28 and a 27, a 29. The values are going to agree. If you've got an old pair of used tubes, even and especially if they're mismatched, like an RCA and a Sylvania, and you plug them in, you're liable to find 32 here and 16 down here. Now, that gets to be a problem because uh, it, it, there are ways to get around it, but you can see that the tubes are not matched. So I think we've uh, pretty well described here uh, a term that we hear all the time, matched output tubes. And what they mean is when you plug them in and you do what we just did, you will get about the same plate current for both tubes. It makes the biasing procedure a lot easier. Remember now in biasing the critical value is the plate dissipation. So we have to uh, do step four here and that is measure the plate voltage for each of the output tubes. And it's done exactly like we did in the first video. Red lead on pin three of this output tube, black lead on the chassis. Uh, voltmeter set to DC volts, get your reading. Say it's 290. Then do the same thing here. Red lead on three, black lead on the chassis. Take your reading. You're going to find almost invariably they are the same. They'll be, if, if this one's 290, so is this one. Then you know the next step is multiply this plate voltage times this plate current that we got from Ohm's law, and you get plate dissipation. Multiply plate voltage of this one times the plate current we got from Ohm's law, you get plate dissipation. Okay, now, no matter uh, how the tubes are biased, whether they are cathode biased or grid biased, this method of measurement uh, of plate dissipation will work no matter what. This is really uh, actually a more accurate method because we're actually measuring plate current when we do this. When we measure the cathode current as we did in the last video and the beginning of this video, uh, we end up with a slightly uh, too high a value. It's, it's elevated a bit. In this one you will get the accurate plate current. Okay, to get you comfortable reading schematics so that you can see exactly uh, what the wiring scheme is for your a particular amp, let's look at several different schematics and I'll make them as varied as I can. This is from a late 30s Gibson EH150, okay, ancient. 5U4 rectifier. We're coming uh, here off of pin 8 of the 5U4 rectifier. We're going to come along here. We go through a speaker field. We come up here to the center tap of the output transformer. This end connected to this plate of the 6L6, which will be pin 3. This end down here connected to this plate of this 6L6, which is also pin 3. To calculate our plate current then, we'll be hooking on pin 3 here, pin 8 down here, and do our resistance and our voltage drop measurement. Then we will leave the lead connected to pin 8 of the rectifier and we'll go to this pin 3 of this 6L6 and do the same thing. Also let's look at how these tubes are biased. Look there's the cathode, okay, the, the little horseshoe. It comes down here and this is cathode biased. These two output tubes share a 200 ohm resistor going to ground. So our method of biasing these tubes will be to alter that resistor if we need to. Okay, this is from a AA764 Princeton Reverb. Down here, GZ34 uh, rectifier, pin 8. Comes up here to the, you guessed it, center tap of the output transformer. The upper end of the transformer goes over here to the plate of this 6V6. The bottom goes to this plate of this 6V6. 
I think you see exactly how we would determine what the plate dissipation is then of these two 6v6s. In this case, if you look, the cathodes are bound together and go straight to ground. Therefore, this is going to be a grid biased uh, type of circuit. Remember, if the cathodes are grounded, the circuit is most likely grid biased. We haven't uh, discussed how to adjust grid bias, but we will. Now let's take a look at the uh, GA40 Gibson amplifier circuit, the famous Les Paul amplifier. Uh, down here we have our 5Y3. Uh, pin 8 comes out here, goes through a filter choke, comes up, and yes sir, right to the center of the output transformer. This end of the output transformer goes to this plate. This end goes to this plate. I hope you're starting to see a pattern here. Also, the GA40, let's see how it's biased. Uh, the cathodes are bound together like they were in my diagram, and it's a 200 ohm cathode bias resistor to ground. So if the tubes are too hot, we increase this value. Tubes are too cold, we reduce that value. Okay, here's a Fender Deluxe Reverb, a uh, AB868 schematic. It looks really complicated and scary, but look down here. Here's the 5U4 rectifier. Pin 8 comes out, comes up here, it goes through the standby switch, a little jag over, and you guessed it, right to the center of the output transformer. This end of the output transformer goes to that plate. This end of the output transformer goes to that plate. You see, no matter what make, no matter what vintage uh, amp it is, they follow the same pattern. And as we can see, the cathodes of the Deluxe Reverb output tubes are bound together like they were in my diagram, but instead of having a biasing resistor, they go straight to ground. Therefore, we know this is grid biased. And last but not least, let's take a look at a, a Valco made uh, Gretsch 6161 circuit. See, I'm trying to cover all the bases here to convince you that it doesn't matter who made the amp, they all follow the same general principles. Uh, let's look down here, we've got our 5Y3, and there, pin 8. Let's follow it, we come out from pin 8, come up here, oh, and what a surprise, right to the center of the output transformer. This end of it goes to the upper plate. This end goes to the lower plate. Isn't it nice how consistent they are? Let's look at the biasing of the 6161 circuit. Well, the cathodes are bound together, and uh, we come out here to a 250 ohm resistor to ground. Once again, tubes too hot, increase the resistance, say to 300. Tubes too cold, reduce it to say 200. You see, it's not as hard as people might lead you to, be, uh, to believe. Well, that does it for part one of this video series on biasing of double-ended amps. Uh, now, in part two, I'm going to actually demonstrate the procedure of biasing uh, via the output transformer rather than the cathode bias resistor. Also, I will discuss with you how to uh, adjust the bias on the grid biased amps, and I'm going to present to you a much better way to cathode bias double-ended amps. We're going to bias each tube individually, okay, which is instead of accepting the average, we're going to bias them separately. Okay, if that sounds appealing, then keep an eye out for the part two video, which should be posted soon. Until then, bye for now, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.